The SM-65 Atlas was the first operational intercontinental ballistic missile developed by the United States and the first member of the Atlas rocket family. Even before its ICBM use ended in 1965, Atlas had placed four Project Mercury astronauts in orbit and was becoming the foundation for a family of successful space launch vehicles, most notably Atlas Agena and Atlas Centaur. Atlas began in 1946 with the award of an Army Air Force's research contract to Convair for the study of a 1,500 to 5,000 mile range missile that might at some future date carry a nuclear warhead. This MX-774 project was named for the Atlas of Greek mythology and the contractor's parent Atlas Corporation. After watching an Atlas ICBM explode shortly after launch, Mercury astronaut Gus Grissom remarked, are we really going to get on top of one of those things? The numerous failures led to Atlas being dubbed an inter-county ballistic missile by missile technicians, but by 1965 most of the problems had been worked out and it was a reliable launch vehicle. Nearly every component in the Atlas managed to fail at some point during test flights, from the engine combustion chambers to the tank pressurization system to the flight control system, but Convair engineers noted with some pride that there had never been a repeat of the same failure more than three times, and every component malfunction on an Atlas flight was figured out and resolved. Booster staging took place at roughly two minutes into launch, although the exact timing could vary considerably depending on the model of Atlas as well as the particular mission being flown. Technology advanced quickly and not long after design work on Atlas was completed, Convair rival Martin proposed a solution to the air starting problem. On the Atlas A, B, C, one turbopump assembly powered both booster engines. On the Atlas D, the booster engines had separate pump assemblies. On the Atlas E, F, each booster turbopump also got its own gas generator. Later space launcher variants of the Atlas used the MA-5 propulsion system with twin turbopumps on each booster engine, driven by a common gas generator. The sustainer engine on all Atlas variants consisted of a single thrust chamber with its own turbopump and gas generator, and two small pressure-fed vernier engines. The total sea level thrust of all five thrust chambers was 360,000 lbf for a standard Atlas D. Atlas E, F had 375,000 pounds of thrust. Total sea level thrust for these three engine Atlas S and Fs was 389,000 lbf. Launcher variants of the Atlas often had performance enhancements to the engines. The Atlas missiles A through D used radio guidance, the missile sent information from its inertial system to a ground station by radio, and received course correction information in return. The warhead of the Atlas D was originally the GEMK-2 heatsink re-entry vehicle with a W-49 thermonuclear weapon, combined weight 3,700 pounds and yield of 1.44 megatons. The Atlas E and F had an Avco MK-4 RV containing a W-38 thermonuclear warhead with a yield of 3.75 MT which was fused for either air burst or contact burst. There were eight Atlas A test flights, conducted in 1957-1958, of which four were successful. The Convair X-12 SM-65B was the second prototype version, introducing the stage and a half system that was a hallmark of the Atlas rocket program. Of ten total flights, Nine were suborbital test flights of the Atlas as an intercontinental ballistic missile, with five successful missions and four failures, the other flight placed the SCORE satellite into orbit. The SM-65C Atlas, or Atlas-C was the third prototype Atlas version, a more refined model with improved, lighter weight components. The SM-65D Atlas, or Atlas-D, was the first operational version of the Atlas missile and the basis for all Atlas space launchers, debuting in 1959. Atlas D weighed 255,950 pounds and had an empty weight of only 11,894 pounds, the other 95.35% was propellant. To provide the United States with an interim or emergency ICBM capability, in September 1959 the Air Force deployed three SM-65D Atlas missiles on open launch pads at Vandenberg AFB, California, under the operational control of the 576th Strategic Missile Squadron, 704th Strategic Missile Wing. The SM-65E Atlas, or Atlas E, was the first three-engine operational variant of the Atlas missile, the third engine resulting from splitting the two booster thrust chambers into separate engines with independent sets of turbopumps. The SM-65F Atlas, or Atlas F, was the final operational variant of the Atlas missile. The Atlas F was essentially a quick-firing version of the Atlas E, modified to be stored in a vertical position inside underground concrete and steel silos. This method of storage allowed the Atlas F to be launched in about 10 minutes, a saving of about 5 minutes over the Atlas D and Atlas E, 
both of which were stored horizontally and had to be raised to a vertical position before being fueled. In September 1959 the first operational Atlas ICBM squadron went on operational alert at F.E. Warren AFB, Wyoming equipped with six SM-65D Atlas missiles based in above-ground launchers. Three additional Atlas D squadrons, two near F.E. Warren AFB, Wyoming, and one at Offutt AFB, Nebraska, were based in above-ground launchers that provided blast protection against overpressures of only 5 pounds per square inch. The SM-65E Atlas were based in horizontal, semi-hard, or, coffin, facilities that protected the missile against overpressures up to 25 psi. The six SM-65F Atlas squadrons were the first ICBMs to be stored vertically in underground silos. After the solid-fuel LGM-30 Minuteman had become operational in early 1963, the Atlas became rapidly obsolete. By October 1964, all Atlas D missiles had been phased out, followed by the Atlas EF in April 1965. About 350 Atlas ICBMs of all versions were built, with a peak deployment level of 129. Despite its relatively short lifespan, Atlas served as the proving ground for many new missile technologies. The white nose cone atop the museum's Atlas is an Avco IV re-entry vehicle built to contain a nuclear warhead. This nose cone actually stood alert in defense of the United States, as it was initially installed on an Atlas on 2 October 1962 at a Denton Valley launch site near Clyde, Texas. Atlas 8A is displayed in front of the Strategic Air Command and Aerospace Museum in Ashland, Nebraska. Reconfigured as an Atlas D Atlas 2E is on display in front of the San Diego Air and Space Museum at Gillespie Field, El Cajon, California. Atlas 10F is on display at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama.